Hi guys, I received a couple of emails regarding how to create honeycomb textures and I presume that this is because for your first project you're trying to do something like this. So I thought I'd put together this short video to showcase how something like that is achieved. Now let's go ahead and create a, a cylinder. I'm going to change the settings for that cylinder to be about radius of 4 and then probably a height of 10. And I'm going to keep 20 subdivisions, that's okay. I'm going to make the subdivisions in height about 8 and, uh, and I'm going to add one to the caps so that we can have two subdivisions up there. Let me turn off the, my grid really quick and let me go ahead and focus on this so we can actually see what I'm about to create. So with this done, what I want to do is I want to take advantage of how to retopologize the, the uh, different components, the, the actual uh, geometry. And this is something that we did when I showed you guys the vase example during class time, how to create that uh, pineapple shape um, for the rhombuses on the side of the pineapple. Now, in this case, you, you could do a couple of things. So the, the idea is to create a honeycomb uh, texture. And for that, you, have a, you need to have a six-sided polygon. Now, you can go in and right-click and go into vertex and start moving these things around until you get the shapes that you want and then you know, cut them with your multi-cut tool and all that, but that's going to take forever. So in order to um, to um, speed up this process, what I want to do is I want to take advantage of the fact that I know that smoothing subdivides uh, each one of the polygons that I have available into four. So if I were to go ahead and cl click on phase, select that phase, and then go to smooth, you'll notice that that smoothing creates four subdivisions just with a value of one. So basically it divides once in one um, in the U direction and, other, and the other one in the V direction. So you basically have four subdivisions per um, polygon. Let me go ahead and undo that really quick. And what I want to do is I want to take advantage of that knowledge and I want to select all of my faces on the front viewport, all the ones that are around, not the caps. As you can see, I didn't select the caps. And what I want to do is I want to poke all of these. So I'm going to go to Mesh, Edit Mesh, Poke, and I want to use the default values. So that basically created triangles. Now when I use triangles, and I know I've said in the past don't use triangles, but for this specific um, texture, we're going to need to break that rule, and we're going to be using the triangles as the base to create the six-sided polygons that we're targeting. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to right-click this, and I want to go to Edge. I want to select this edge right here, and I want to go to Select Contiguous Edges so that I select the entire. So this forces, remember, this forces, even though, because if I were to double click this, notice that because all of these edges are falling into that same vertex, then the program doesn't know whether to contiguous means, means this way or it means this way. It just doesn't know. So if I go ahead and say, okay, we'll select this one, for example, and then I go to select contiguous, is going to force the direction of that edge. Is going to say, okay, this edge is pointing in this direction, so I'm going to force select all of the edges that are contiguous in that direction. And that includes the ones at the top and the bottom, so I don't want to select those. So let me grab a selection while pressing the control key to deselect the top and bottom ones on the caps. I don't want to have those selected, but I do want to have the one on this side, as you can see, and the one on this side. Now, with those two selected, I want to go to select similar options and I want to reset that tool and then I'm going to click select and you'll notice that it creates all it selects all of the columns across the entire geometry so with that done I want to press control keep it pressed and hit the delete key or the backspace key to remove the edges now that leaves me with the triangles but it also leaves me with this rhombus shapes in the middle these guys are here this these diamond shapes and I want to make sure that I triangulate those as well so to do that what I want to do is I want to go ahead and switch my component mode to face mode and I'm going to select this guy here and I'm going to select basically I'm going to select a row I mean a, a column of these all the way down notice that is all all of the ones that contain straight rhombuses, not the ones that are half. I want to maintain those halves. And as a matter of fact, that's what I want to do with these. I want to divide them in two. So let's go to select similar. And you'll notice that it selects all of the shapes around that have the similar 
design as the original column that I had selected. Now with those selected, what I want to do is I want to go to Mesh, Triangulate, and that divides those into separate triangles. So now I have everything triangulated. My entire geometry has been triangulated around the entire object on the sides. So with that triangulation, what I want to do is I want to take advantage of that smooth uh, operation that I showed you earlier, because when it comes to triangles, the smoothing does something a little bit different. Let's take a look. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and before I do anything else, I want to go ahead and select Edge, double click my edge. All of these edges are in the around the front over here, all of this stuff. I want to make sure that I select those, not the ones on the top and bottom. So I want to retain those clean, but the ones in the front, I mean, on the outside of the of the cylinder. And I want to create a set that I can quickly um, select a little bit later. So I want to go ahead and go to, to create. And I want to create a set, quick select set. Now I want to give it a name. Let's call it um, outer edges. And I'm going to click OK. Now with that done, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I click, click face, select all of the faces in the front, everything. And I want to go ahead and apply a smooth modifier or that smooth, smooth operation, sorry. And you'll notice that uh, that automatically created my hexagons along with a bunch of triangles. Basically, it just created quads. As you can see, they're all quads, but they're all deformed because of the triangulation that I had done before. And you now see the shapes of the honeycomb in there. Now, all I want to do is remove all that geometry that I had there before. That was the base geometry for what we just created. So to do that, I'm going to go to Select. And I'm going to go to Quick Select Set and Load the set that I had just saved a few minutes ago. So I'll go ahead and click outer edit that selects all of the edges that I had selected before. And I can press control backspace or control delete. And now my geometry has been changed into a honeycomb shape. So from here, if I wanted to have just a honeycomb shape, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and right click edge. And I want to select all of the outer geometry once again no caps, so you can see. And I want to go ahead and bevel this. So I want to go ahead and click on bevel. I want to make sure that I have probably one segment would be enough. And I'm going to leave it at the default at, you know, what fraction of 0.1. You can increase that if you want to make it a little bit bigger. But for now, I just want the texture. So I want to have 0.1 as, the, as my setting. Then I'm going to right click, go to face, select this face. And then I'm going to go to select similar you'll notice that only selects a certain row okay so you might want to go ahead and select say two of these and try if that see if that helps and it does it selects all of the faces except for the ones at top and bottom so maybe we want to go one two and three and go select similar and it selects all of the faces now if this is still not working as you go notice that the similar has options so we can click on similar options and we can increase the threshold here the tolerance you can go high so for example let me try doing that with just this one i'm going to select the tolerance and i'm going to go to let's say five so that's quite high from where it was the original one is 0 0.001 but let's say i change that to five so what i'm going to do is go with five and apply and you'll notice that that selected everything all of those polygons not the ones from the bevel, but the ones that are similar. So that changing that value does the exact same thing as opposed to having to select three separate faces. So you get to the exact same point the same, in two ways. So let me close this. And with these faces selected, making sure that nothing is selected on top and bottom, let me go ahead and hit the control or the backspace key in this case, or the delete key. And you'll notice that I now have the structure of a honeycomb. Now, I can go ahead and extrude this if I want to give it a little bit. If it's, if it's too flat, I can go ahead and select all of that geometry. Let me go ahead and select faces once again. Select all of these faces here. Maybe I want to go ahead and apply an extrusion value. Extrude. Let me switch so that I can see here what I'm doing on the perspective viewport. And maybe I want to go ahead and increase the thickness of it by, I don't know, 
uh, let me actually just do it dynamically. So 0.1 is more than enough over here. And as you can see, you now have thickness to the structure if you need to have that kind of thickness. If you press 3 right now, these turn into circles, as you can see. Let me go ahead and select the object, press 3. You'll notice that they have a kind of an elliptical shape. And that's because they are basically, they have, there's enough geometry there for you to actually go in that direction. If you don't want to have the elliptical, remember, you can always reinforce these edges before you do the extrusion. Like we did in class, you can create extra edge loops as necessary to reinforce this. Or when you do the beveling, maybe you want to do a couple of bevels, a couple of subdivisions so that you have some reinforcement in there to maintain the shape of the honeycomb. So this is how you would go ahead and create, by the way, you probably noticed that you have that my honeycombs are a little bit stretched and that's stretched and that's because of the amount of subdivisions that I had on the original cylinder. I started with 20 in order to make them not so wide. Maybe you want to increase that amount to like 32 or something like that to start with. And hopefully this will alleviate that problem. It will alleviate the problem. It will make them smaller. So I hope this answers the question.